He presented with Philip Andre. And I want to say all this because he was my colleague. And he, when I examined him, I found he had a trickling of the left side of the face. Lower face. That's all. So immediately took him to the hospital because I suspected uh, an upper motor neuron lesion. I suspected a stroke. And thereafter, I did test that with these. I've written the findings here, but I'm going to show you a short video clip. Good day, everybody. These are the first printed record echo acquisition tri banner CDs of brain MRIs. These are echo sections of the brain showing diffuse cortical atrophy, compensatory hypertrophy of the lateral reticles, multiple lacular subcortical infarcts on the right side, and evidences of periventricular ischemia. These are coronal sections which also show the subcortical infarcts much more prominently, and these are. So the sections going from lateral to medium and they also show subcortical atrophy, periventricular ischemia. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sanjay Sanya. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So these are some screenshots to show you basically what I told you just now, so that you can see more clearly. You can see that there was a patient who was just 26 years old, but he has got disproportionate cortical atrophy. He has got compensatory hypertrophy of the lateral ventricles. He has got multiple lacunar 3 to 4 millimeters of cortical infarcts. And I will show you the more, more of them. And he has got periventricular ischemia. These are fast radiant recall echo acquisition images. FGRE. <coughs> so we had to investigate further. So therefore, I did a few more investigations. Three dimensional and two dimensional time of flight spot gradient recall echo acquisition brain magnetic resonance angiograms of both the vertebral arteries and the carotid arteries. So these are the findings, but let me show you another quick video clip. Take a very good look at the right vertebral artery. Welcome to the next video series on three dimensional time of flight spot gradient recall MRA series of the brain. We have to imagine that the head is slowly spinning in a clockwise direction. We notice that the right vertebral artery is distinctly narrow compared to the left vertebral artery. The next thing we notice is what appears to be an accessory right vertebral artery on the right side. The accessory right vertebral artery seems to have an abnormal communication with the narrow right vertebral artery, which itself appears to be bifid. As you can see clearly here, it also seems to have a communication with the right intracarotid artery and it seems to have an abnormal distribution on the right side of the brain which is not matched by a corresponding distribution on the left side of the brain. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and So now let's come to the final set. So these are the screenshots. Now take a good look. This is the accessory right vertebral artery. This is the narrow right vertebral artery. And as you can see the next, this is a bifid narrow right vertebral artery. An accessory vertebral artery right side is having a communication with the bifid narrow right vertebral artery and also seems to have a communication with the right common carot internal carotid, sorry, not common, internal carotid, as well as it seems to have an abnormal distribution on the right side of the brain, which is not matched by a corresponding distribution on the left side of the brain. You have to imagine, when you saw the video, you have to imagine that the patient's head is slowly spinning in a clockwise direction. So these are some screenshots. Now, this is the same thing shown to you in a two-dimensional time of flight. Spot gradient recall, echo acquisition, MRA. Please take a close look. Remember, this is the right side, this is the left side. So this is the right vertebral artery. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our third demonstration, two-dimensional time of flight, spot gradient recall, echo acquisition. Straight away, we can notice that the right vertebral artery is distinctly narrow compared to the vertebral artery. As the slices move up, we notice that there's an accessory vertebral artery on the right side, which is separate from the narrow right vertebral artery. And as the slices move even further up, and as the right narrow vertebral artery is moving towards the left vertebral artery, we will notice that the narrow right vertebral artery has now become a bifid right vertebral artery. And as the slices move even further up, we will notice that the bifid portion is uniting with the accessory vertebral artery, while the main <coughs> right vertebral artery remains the narrow right vertebral artery. 
Here we see the beginning of the grounded circulation. Okay. So these are again the screenshots. Now, what I'm trying to focus is what was the cause? What was the diagnostic problem? This patient, remember, he had presented with a left-sided lower motor neuron, upper motor neuron, that is lower face face palsy. So we are trying to establish that. Okay, so these are screenshots of what I showed you just now. As you can see, that this is the narrow right vertebral artery. This is the narrow right vertebral artery, and you can see that it is an accessory right vertebral artery here. So we did a two-dimensional time of flight, small gradient record acquisition of the carotid circulation also, just to make sure what was the problem. Take a quick look at this video. This is the fourth video of the series, two dimensional type of flight, small gradient record acquisition, essentially showing the carotid circulation. The right side is still narrow, as we had mentioned earlier, and now we can see that they unite for the basal artery, and the carotids are in the carotid canal, the deepest part of the temporal bone. Now the carotids are entering the midbrainial fossa. The intercarotid is in the gamma sinus. Here's the carotid siphon, which is making 180 degree bend. Now the carotids are in the central part. We can see the posterior cerebral artery winding around the cerebral pedicles, and the carotid artery is dividing into the mid cerebral artery, which is running in the lateral fissure sylvius and the anterior cerebral artery in the nostril fissure of the brain. Here we can see the individual anterior middle and the posterior cerebral artery, which are normal. Thank you very much for watching me. So basically, what we did was we traced even the carotid circulation, and we found that the entire carotid circulation is normal. The middle cerebral artery, the anterior cerebral artery, all A1, A2, A3, M1, M2, M3, M4, and the P1, P2, P2, A, 2B, and P3, P4 were normal. And so the basic problem was, what was the diagnostic problem? How did the patient develop this left-sided low motor neuron facial palsy? So anyway, we put the patient on ICU, we put the patient on statins and aspirin, and his facial drooping took improved in the next 24 hours. And we discharged him and we advised him to continue the life, uh, lifestyle and uh, mo modify the lifestyle. And one week later, he was free from neurological deficit. You see, isolated vertebral artery stenosis is a well documented entity, and the literature is full of them. Subcortical infarcts with transient ischemic attacks is also very well known. Multi infarct dementias are also well documented. But this was a case of a narrow, a bifid right vertebral artery, an accessory right vertebral artery. He had multiple subcortical lacunar infarcts. Lacunar means less than 5 millimeter, 3 to 4 millimeter, more on the right side. And he had cortical trophy without dementia. He was a 46 year old male. And he had a fresh episode of left sided facial weakness. So, from what we have established it now, we found that he did not have any large vessel disease. His carotids were all right. His ACA, his MCA, his PCAs were all right. All the four parts of FCA, four, four parts of PCA, three parts of ACA. But he did have accurate infarcts. So he did have small vessel disease. And he did have more of them on the right side. As we saw in the first pictures, that's the fast gradient recall echo acquisition images. Now what we postulated was that perhaps the normal right vertebral circulation, the right carotid, the right vertebral artery, bifid right vertebral artery, accessory right vertebral artery with its abnormal communication may have been a cause of this more problem on the right side and this fresh episode may have been an episode of a fresh episode of small vessel disease. And that may explain the left-sided patient's findings. He obviously did not have any evidence of embolic, embolic or hemorrhagic strokes. So these are my literature reviews. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much.